Okay guys, let's go ahead and continue on our steps for our hypothesis testing. So we began with to identify the data, our type of data, cover our population and parameter, and kind of state our hypotheses. So that was kind of one through three. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about four, five, and six. Uh, and I might have said these like in different orders. The, sometimes the orders get switched up, um, but we generally need to cover all of these steps. Okay, so step number four, we're going to say state alpha. So remember our alpha level is the percent of the time that we're willing uh, to, we'll say like reject the null hypothesis or say that the null hypothesis is wrong when in fact the null hypothesis is correct. So we need to state our alpha level. A lot of times this is given to us in the, the problem, uh, or if we're actually doing research, it usually is set by industry standards. Okay, so number five, we can uh, determine, or yeah, we'll say identify, identify test equation. So we need to go through and figure out like what equation are we actually going to use to calculate our test statistic. Uh, and so we've been using a lot of these already when we did um, looking at like a one sample uh, means and one sample proportions. We've done these a lot already and I'll, I'll show these further when we are in our, our software. But we need to identify our test equation and while we're at it, we should determine uh, should we even do analysis. Okay, because remember, like we're still bound by the, not by the restrictions of the central limit theorem. Uh, if we want to do any of these tests, we need to make sure that either the original population is normally distributed or that we have a large enough sample size. Okay, so we need to identify our test equation and should we even do the analysis. All right, our next step is number six is to do two things. We need to calculate the test statistic. And p-value. Okay, so the p-value, let's, let's put up a definition real quick. We can say that the p value that is equal to the probability uh, the result we see we see would occur or even more rare put that parenthesis over here. Give me a second. If the null hypothesis is true. Okay, so we state our alpha, we identify our test equation, and if we should even do the analysis, and then we calculate the test statistic and the p-value. And so the test statistic, this is going to be like a z-score or a t-score for these right now. And our p-value is the probability that the result that we see would occur, or even more rare. So it's either the result that we see would occur or something rarer, if the null hypothesis is in fact true. And we'll cover how to do this within our, uh, our software uh, videos.